Good morning, and welcome to Smith Chapel, Amy Church. I greet you all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is indeed an honor to come together on this first Sunday in December and the second Sunday of the Advent season, a season of celebration, hope, anticipation, and expectation. With our hope and anticipation of the return of Christ the King in his second advent, we remember the birth of the Prince of Peace, the Lord of Lords, the Great I Am, the Holy One. Hallelujah. We thank God for his presence with us on today. Amen. Hallelujah. We welcome his sweet Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you this morning with thanksgiving in our hearts. Lord, we thank you for blessing us to see this day. Lord, we come with great anticipation as we began the second Sunday of Advent. We come, Lord, in need of peace. Lord, we know that your son, Jesus Christ, is indeed the Prince of Peace. Having him in our lives allows us to feel that peace even when we are surrounded by unrest. Because of his birth, life, death, and resurrection, we can be stand blameless, Lord, before you. And that is the best gift we could ever ask for. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of peace that you have given us through your son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, we ask that you help us to be your instrument of peace in this season and always. It is in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, the Prince of Priests, that we pray this prayer. And we all say together, amen. And praise God. Good morning, Smith Chapel. Good morning. Oh, we're entering into the Amen. Yuletide season. Jesus is the reason for the season. He's season. the reason for the what? Season. Yes, he is. I feel good. And I thank God that he allowed me to see the first last Sunday of the year. That's a blessing, ain't it, y'all? Yes, All right. Amen. Let's celebrate him. Yes. Song says Jesus. Here we go. Jesus. Jesus. Oh, what a wonderful child. Oh, what a wonderful child. I love to call his name. Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus. He's holy. So holy. Meek and mild. Meek and mild. New, life. New life. New hope. New hope. To all he brings. All he brings. Listen, Listen to the angels to sing. The angels sing. They're singing. Glory, 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 glory to the Lord. Born King. Sound good. Let's do it again, girl. Jesus. Jesus. Come on and clap your hands at home. Jesus. Oh, he's a wonderful child. Oh, what a wonderful child. I wouldn't trade him for nothing. His name is Jesus. He's the King of Kings. Jesus. And the Lord of Lords. So holy. He's holy. Meek and mild. New life. New hope. New hope. That's what he brings. Oh, he brings. Just listen, listen to those angels. To the 
What they singing? Glory. Glory. Uh huh. Born king. Listen. He was born in a manger. Wrapped in swallowing clothes. Virgin Mary chosen as his mother. And Joseph as his earthly father. Three wise men, they were coming from afar. Hey. They were guided by the shining star. They came to see King Jesus and where he lay in a mansion filled with hay. Talking about Jesus, the God Almighty, I love to call him. He's a wonderful, wonderful child. When I get bored and I call him, Jesus, he's my everything. Jesus, he's holy. Speak in my life. No hope to all. Why don't you listen to the angels sing? What they singing, girl? Glory, glory, glory to the Lord. Listen, he was born in a major wrapped in the swallowing clothes. They tell me Virgin Mary chosen as his mother and chosen as his earthly father. Three wise men came from afar. They were guided by the shining star. They came to see King Jesus and where he laid in a manger filled with head. Yeah, Jesus. Good God Almighty, I love him. He's a wonderful, 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 wonderful child. I love to call his name. Sweet Jesus. Jesus. He's holy. Meek and mild. New life. New hope. All he brings. To the angels sing. What are they saying? Glory. 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 King. Come on. What's his name, y'all? Stay right there. Jesus. I love to call him Jesus. 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 My burden bearer. Jesus. Heavy load sharer. Jesus. He's a friend indeed. Jesus. Supplies all your needs. Jesus. He was born on Jesus. Christmas morning. And Jesus. He was born on Jesus. Christmas morning. And Jesus. What a mighty baby. His name is Jesus. Jesus. What a mighty, 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 mighty baby called Jesus. 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 The more I call him, the better I feel. The more I call him, the better I feel. If you get in trouble, he's a burden bearer, heavy low sharer. Get real sick, call on Jesus. He got all the medicine. He got all the medicine. He got all the medicine wrapped up in the hem of his garment. I love to call him Jesus. 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 Oh, what a wonderful child. I love to call his name Sweet Jesus. He's holy. Meek 
Listen to the angels They're singing Glory Glory They're singing Glory Glory They're singing Glory Glory To the new King Here we are Our second Sunday of Advent and we will go into the home of the Samuels family. Our young people, Alicia and Emily, they will bless us with the reading. God has ordered that every high mountain and the everlasting hills be made low, and the valleys filled up to make level ground. It is this level ground for which we wait. Redefine us, purify us, redefine us. Make us instruments of your peace and help us to resist oppressive forces. The Lord has ordered that every crooked place shall be made sure and every rough way be made smooth. And we wait and pray for the day when all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Refine us, purify us, redefine us. Make us instruments of your peace and help us to resist oppressive forces. We join with God in becoming instruments of peace, restorers of justice, and stewards of equity. Give to us, O Lord, a renewed spirit of peace and justice, knowing that they exist alongside each other. We light a candle of peace, trusting that it is the peace of God which surpasses our understanding, and will keep our hearts and minds even in our waiting for Christ. Amen. We will now light two candles, the candle of hope and the candle of peace as we wait on the coming of our Lord and know that God is the peace he will give us that surpasses all understanding. <laughs> we thank God for his peace. Good morning, Smith Chapel. It's that time of service that you can also participate with us. You know, when um, the Lord blesses us, it's such a wonderful opportunity to bless him back. And it's that time when we can participate, and this is our worship experience. So here's what we are going to ask for you to do. Get your offering together. You will see at the bottom of your screen, there's a couple ways that you can give here at Smith Chapel. You can give via PayPal. You can give via Givelify. And you will even see a QR code. You can point your phone to that QR code, and it will take you directly to Givelify. And you can mail your offering into the church. Now, I tell you what we're going to do as we get ready to give back unto the Lord what he has blessed us with. I am going to raise my envelope to the heavenlies. And usually I have my phone, but I'm going to raise my offering. And here's the prayer that we say here at Smith Chapel. Lord, help me to grasp that the money that I think I have, it's not mine. Lord, it's yours. Lord, help me to grasp that all the money that the church has, it is not the church's, but it is yours. Lord, give us a grateful and thankful and giving heart as we give today. Lord, take the offerings that we give, use it according to your purposes. And Lord, we know that you are going to press it down, shake it together, and give it back to us in ways we could not ever even imagine. So now let's go ahead and let's prepare our offering for the Lord. Give and I'll give it back to you. Give and I'll give it back to you. I'll give it back to you. I'll press it down. Shake it together. Run and run and run and over. I'll, I'll give it back. To you. We back, Smith Chapel. Yes, sir. Y'all feel good this morning? All right. Little song, says the Holy One. For you, Pastor. He's the King. He is the King of Kings. 
Oh yeah. He's the Lord of Lords. He's the great I am. Yes. Let's do it again, ladies. He's the king of kings. He is the king Hallelujah. Yes, he is. And the Lord of the Lord. He's the great. I am. He's the holy one. Listen, he's the prince of peace. He is the prince of peace. It's Sunday, y'all. A peace Sunday. But he's the great I am. Yes, he is. He's the holy one. 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 He's the great. He's the great. I am. Again, he's the Prince of Peace, y'all. He is the Prince of Peace. Yes, he is. Oh, he is the Lord of Lords. The great I am. He's the great oh, yeah. I am. He's the Lord. Let's go to the vamp, y'all. Holy One. This y'all sound real good to me, yeah. One. No one like him nowhere. One. Come on, girls, let's take it up. Oh yeah. One. Come on and put your hands together this morning. I like it, I like it. Shereen, say it for me. All them altos, strong and mighty. Come on, sing it at home if you're alto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, Oscar, sing it a little bit. In. Go for them tenors and contralto. Everybody, holy. Holy one. Oh, I like this, yeah. Holy one. Oh, sounds real good, y'all. Holy one. That's what he is. H O L Y. Holy. holy. Hey, come on in, y'all. Holy one. Holy one. He is so holy to me. I 
I can't turn this thing loose, y'all. It's Charlie Goose. He's so holy, yes, he is. One more time, one more time, y'all. He's so holy, he's so kind. He brings me some peace of mind. Yes, sir. <laughs> Holy one. Hallelujah. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. He is the Prince of Peace. Yes. He is the Lord of Lords. He's the great I am. Yes. My Lord is the Holy One. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. For he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. We praise him on this morning because praise is what we do. We praise him in advance for the word that he has prepared for us. Amen. Hallelujah. And that word is found in Philippians, the fourth chapter. If you'll read along with me, that's reading in your basic information before leaving earth. You read along with me. I'll begin reading at the fourth verse through the ninth verse. Reading from the New International Version and this is how it reads. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, Whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. The Lord will have me speak to you this morning on the subject, Christ is our peace. Let us pray. Most gracious and kind, Heavenly Father, we come before you right now. We just thank you, Lord. For you are the Lord of Lords. You are the King of Kings. You are the peace, the Prince of Peace. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for just blessing us to come together in fellowship to hear a word from you. Hallelujah. And Lord, we welcome your sweet Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. To have your way in our lives. Have your way in this place. Lord, it is our prayer that as we hear your word, that we are not only hearers of your word, but doers also. Lord, I pray that you move me aside and allow your Holy Spirit to dwell inside of me. Lord, that you will rise up inside of me and demonstrate your power. We will give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. And the children of the Most High God say together, Amen. And praise God. Hallelujah. Christ is our peace. Last Sunday, we lit the first candle of the Advent wreath, and that candle was hope. Hope, which keeps us from worrying, and it allows us to leave the unanswered questions in God's hands. It empowers us to say, to stay at peace, and, to, and enables us to believe that the best of our days are coming. Because we trust in God's love and we trust in his power to provide for us, we trust in his ability to lead us in every situation, we can have peace. Amen. 
And we also light the hope candle again today. We light it as a remembrance of that Christ will come and he will fulfill God's promises for us. We light the second candle, which is the candle of peace. And you know, peace is a word that we hear a lot. Everybody wants a peace of mind, amen? It is something that we all hope for. And Christ brought peace when he first came to us. He's going to bring everlasting peace when he come again. Because not only is Christ our hope, but Christ is also our peace. The prophet Isaiah says it best in Isaiah 9 verse 6. He says, for unto us a child is born. To us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he shall be called wonderful, counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. When Jesus came, he taught people the importance of being peacemakers. And he said to those who make peace, he said, we will be called children of God. Now, when we light the candle of peace, it reminds us that Jesus is our prince of peace. And through him, peace can be found. Most of us, we're not even looking for fame. We're not looking for fortune or power. What we want is just to be happy. How many of y'all want to be happy? Amen. Hallelujah. But somehow circumstances keep getting in our way. Just when you think you got everything all together, here come another problem. Anybody know what I'm talking about? If it ain't one thing, it's another. There's always something going on. Lots of things can send you into a life of turmoil. You're faced with a situation where you're set back financially or someone that you love dies and You're overloaded with too much to do and you just don't have enough time to do it. Your health fails and if that's not enough, for almost two years, church, we have been dealing with a world pandemic. This pandemic has been devastating to our communities. It has disrupted what we know as normal and it's causing us to be physically separated. Separated from our families, from our friends, from our faith-based communities. And then when you turn on the news, mm, mm, mm. what do we hear? We hear about a shooting at a high school where four were killed and seven were injured. Hmm. And they say the parents knew something about it. Oh my God. So since the shooting, what has happened now is we have some copycat threats. The, ch- the schools are forced to close and those who haven't, the parents are forced to make a decision to keep their children home to ensure their safety. How can anybody have peace when we're dealing with situations like this? Well, you know, the world offers ways to find peace. The bookstore overflows with advice on how to find happiness. Then we have drugs and liquor promises. Yes, people, you know what I'm talking about. When you're feeling down, you just want to, some of them take, decide to go and try that little drug thing. Then we got others that decide they want to take something to drink. And you do this to numb the pain. Now, this is something serious, something we need to think about. So many people are out there dealing with drug habits, dealing with alcohol habits as a result of pain and it's because they were looking for that peace of mind that we're all looking for but instead of them turning to the Lord they turn to the worldly things yes money money promises some of us think that we can buy our way out of our pain that we can buy our way into peace then we got movies Movies that we watch about good romance. How many of y'all watch Hallmark? Yeah, that's one of my favorites. Yeah, they try to tell you how to have good romance. But you know what? There is a difference, church. There is a difference between the peace that the world offers and a peace that God offers. Think about it. The peace that the world provides, is, uh, it depends on your surroundings, the things that you're surrounded by. But the peace that the Lord offers, it is. You can have that kind of peace in any kind of situation that you're faced with. All you got to do is put it in the hands of the Lord. Amen. Amen. 
Paul, who was in prison, he wrote a letter to the church of the Philippi in which he was greatly persecuted. But the letter that Paul addressed was the peace of God and as things which surpasses all understanding. Yes, according to the world, we have peace only when we are having a peaceful environment. But God offers true peace. Let me hear you say true peace. Hallelujah. Even during the situation, during times when you are in the midst of suffering, God will offer you the true peace that you need. To help us to understand the peace of God that he provides, I would like for you to visualize something for me. I want you to visualize two paintings. Okay? The first one is a beautiful mountain with a calm stream of water flowing smoothly over it with a beautiful blue sky. And the birds are flying happily. Yeah, that's the first picture. The second painting is it has the same features, but it's totally different. The mountain is sketched with this sharp edge that would tear anything that fell on it. The water is not flowing smoothly. Instead, it has the look of a harsh nature that is very high waterfalls and it's not living is no living being could could survive if, if, if by the force of this fall because this water is really harsh the sky is not blue it, it's dark and with a flash light piercing through it and the rainfall provides this depressed atmosphere now among all this there is a small nest inside of that harsh water that mountain that I'm talking to you about. There is a small nest with a bird that's protecting its chicks. The chicks were in perfect peace, y'all. Not worried about the harsh things that were going on all around them. As you visualize the two paintings, even though they were all with the same features, they were totally different, right? The way I described that thing, they were totally different. But yet... The birds in both paintings are at peace. Hmm. The second painting, however, is the kind of peace that God offers us. Hmm. God does not remove the problem, church. Instead, he makes us walk through the problem. Hallelujah. And while we're walking through the problem, God's peace fills our hearts because he is with us all the time. Hallelujah. Yes, he is because he is the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. As is written in John 14, 27, this is what it says. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Hallelujah. We see that he shares his peace with us. Many of us are probably wondering in this season of stress and turmoil, in this season of uncertainty, how do we obtain and maintain God's peace? Hmm. Well, just for a few minutes, I'd like to share with you three things that we can do to obtain and maintain the peace of God. Hallelujah. The first thing we must do, church, is ask God for the peace. Hallelujah. You have not because you ask not. To attain God's peace, we must, after recognizing that we don't have it, yes, we need to ask God for it. Hallelujah. In verse 6 and 7 of our text, Paul tells us very simple formula. He says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And then he says, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will grant your hearts and your minds, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Notice the simplicity here and the sequence. It says, don't worry, pray, and give thanks. Hallelujah. And then, this advice, when it's followed, the peace of God will overwhelm our souls. Hallelujah. This peace is the inner tranquility resulting from our close walk with God. 
The great thing is this priest that transcends all understanding is beyond our ability to understand. Hallelujah. But the second thing we must do in order to obtain and maintain God's peace is discipline ourselves to follow God's word and his principles. Amen. Church, sometimes we make things in life more uh, complicated than they need to be. Yeah, I know this pandemic we are caught up in and it caught us off guard. It's sometimes we have, it's something that we had never experienced before. But you know what, church? On the situation, on this situation that we are dealing with, where we can maintain peace by God is simply by following his rules. While we're dealing with this pandemic and all the other chaos that's going around us, all we have to do is simply follow God's rules. And God's word tells us in Psalm 119, verses 165 and 167, it says, Great peace have they who love your law, and nothing can make them stumble. Let me say that again. Great peace have they who love your law, and nothing can make them stumble. I obey your statutes, for I love them greatly. Hallelujah. Here he says to us, those like himself who love God's word and hope in him for salvation will enjoy great peace. So you see, church, when we condition ourselves to follow God's word and obey his principles, when we continue to focus on what God's word commands us to do and not what man wants us to do, we will have the peace we long for even in the midst of the things that are going on around us. Amen. And finally, in order to maintain God's peace, we must place our complete and absolute trust in God. Hallelujah. Even in this season of stress and turmoil, in this season of uncertainty, we must stop trying to understand why and just put our trust in God. Amen. Hallelujah. We must not let the lot of time and energy try to figure out. We don't need to put a lot of time and energy in trying to figure this thing out. No, we need to let the word of God direct us because the word of God says in, in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, what does it say? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not into thy own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Amen. To trust in the Lord completely means that we should not rely on our own understanding because human insight is never enough. We may not understand God's ways of doing things, yet we have the assurance, church, that he is trustworthy. All the wisdom we may acquire can never replace the need for the complete trust that we have to have in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We have a choice, church, as to where to apply the emotional, spiritual, and physical energy either in the problem or the solution. If we trust in the Lord, we will have the perfect peace that we long for. Amen. Hallelujah. My brothers and my sisters, the peace that God offers is different from what the world offers. Amen. We can try every solution the world has to offer and still we won't have peace. Somebody was looking for it in an alcohol bottle. Somebody tried to find it on crack cocaine. But God is the only one that can give you peace. God offers this inward peace which is independent of our environment. Amen. He offers the peace in the midst of all our problems. God wants to give us the same peace that he gave Jesus. A peace that carried him through the worst torment of the world that could ever dish out. Hallelujah. Even while Jesus was being tormented and ridiculed and an unbearable cross he had to bear, amen, he had peace. God's peace goes deep down, y'all. It goes deep down into your soul where nothing or no one can touch it. If you're looking for peace, come to Jesus. 
That's all you got to do. He wants to give you that kind of peace that will be never, that can never be taken away from you. Hallelujah. Let us enjoy his peace on today. And let us not be anxious of anything, realizing that God is still in control. Amen. He's in control of everything we could possibly do if we let him. Hallelujah. Let us also mend broken relationships with others. Yes, because there can be no peace when our relationships are broken. Who is God talking to? Hallelujah. Some of us have broken relationships and don't even understand or remember why. But there can be no peace when relationships are broken. Jesus restored the broken relationship between God and us. Let us take that same initiative to mend those broken relationships that we have with one another. So, when we do that, God will give us that peace that we are longing for, amen? The kind of peace that flows down like a river, down into our soul. Yes, God will give us the kind of peace, y'all, that surpasses all understanding. Because it's this peace, hallelujah, that shall keep your heart and your, your mind stayed on Jesus. Yes, it's this peace that can keep you when you can't keep yourself hallelujah the kind of peace that helps you to hold things together the kind of peace that gives you the strength that you didn't even know you had the kind of peace that gives you the courage hallelujah to step out on faith hallelujah yes the kind of peace that lifts you up when you've been torn down the kind of peace that wipes your tears from your eyes i don't know about you church but all at times, when I should be crying, when I should be filled with despair, when my back is up against the wall, hallelujah, God is my peace. People sometimes wonder why I can walk around and smile. Why I can walk around and have that peace. It's because of the God I serve that sits high and looks low. I put it all in his hands. Hallelujah. And it is his peace that gives me that joy that I need. That unspeakable joy. It is his peace that helps me to love my enemies. It is his peace, church, that helps me to look past the faults of my brothers and sisters and see their needs. Yes, it is God's peace that allows me to do the things that I'm able to do. Amen. And you know what, church? He's passing out peace this morning. Hallelujah. Can we receive it on this morning? Can we receive it in our hearts? Can we receive it in our minds? Can we receive the peace that God is offering us down in our souls? Hallelujah. Let us start that today. Let us start with receiving his peace by asking him for it. Hallelujah. Let us start receiving his peace by following him. Hallelujah. Let us start receiving his peace. By trusting him. Hallelujah. Because God is. The prince of peace. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Heavenly father. Lord we thank you for the word that has gone forth. Lord we bless you. For our lives. We give you praise Lord. For your grace and your mercy and your peace. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Even though we are not as faithful as we ought to be to you, Lord, we ask that you will give us peace. A peace in our hearts. A peace in our minds. A peace in our souls. Lord, that you will give us peace in this land. Remove everything that is causing stress, grief, and sorrow in our lives. Please guide our path, Lord. Guide us through life and make our enemies to be at peace with us. Let your peace reign in our families and in our churches and our workplace, Lord. In everything that we lay our hands on, Lord. Let your angels of peace go ahead of us when we go out and stay by our side when we return. Yes, Lord, it is in your son Jesus' name that we pray this prayer. And we all say together, amen. And praise God. Oh.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now there just might be somebody here today. Somebody who's looking for some peace. Somebody who's gone through some things and you don't know quite how to get yourself out of it. Christ is our peace. Perhaps there's somebody who's looking for a church home. Hmm. You've been out of fellowship, and I know we're in a pandemic, but there are still ways we can fellowship one, one another. And you've been out of fellowship. You're looking for a church from home. Smith Chapel is the place to be. Hallelujah. We invite you to come and be a part of our Smith Chapel family. If you haven't prayed the prayer of salvation, the one that gives you the, the, the reassurance that you need, that should God call you home, Hallelujah. It could be in a shooting, unexpectedly. It could be just a sudden drop dead and die. But if God called you home, you would know that you will be blessed with the gift of everlasting life. If you haven't prayed that prayer, I invite you to pray that prayer with me. Use my words, but use your heart as we go before the throne of grace. Heavenly Father, I come before you today, Lord, seeking your forgiveness for my sins. Lord, please forgive me for my wrong. I come confessing with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believing in my heart, Lord, that you rose him from the dead. And because I confess, because I believe, because I surrender to you, I thank God I am saved. Praise be to God. Am saved. Now, if there's anyone out there who prayed that prayer with me, anyone who's looking for that peace or want to be a part of the Smith Chapel family, please let us know who you are. You can reach us by calling 313-561-2387. Or if you're in the need of prayer, we have the prayer number. The line is, is on the bottom of the screen. Prayer Smith Chapel, amechurch.org. Hallelujah. You can get a personal prayer. Or if you want to pray with our prayer call, we're on the same Zoom line on Tuesday mornings at 7 o'clock. Just 30 minutes. Call in and pray with us. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for you on today. And we pray that you have been blessed. Hallelujah. And you will be able to bless somebody else. Thank you, Jesus. Let now. there Hallelujah. be peace Thank you, Jesus. on earth. Yes. And let it begin. Christ is our peace. Me. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank God for his peace. We thank God for each and every one of you. We thank God for this first Sunday in December that we come together in remembrance of him and break bread. Hallelujah. So as we prepare for our communion, each of you should have a cracker, a cup with some, with some juice. If you don't have it, I give you a minute to get it ready and we will prepare for communion. Hallelujah. Let us praise Thank God you. together on our knees. Hallelujah. Let us praise God together Hallelujah. on our knees. When I fall on my knees With my face to the rising sun Oh Lord, Hallelujah. have mercy on me Amen. Won't you join me in our prayer of confession that is listed on the screen. Follow along as I recite. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, 
judge of all men. We acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them are grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may evermore serve and please you in the newness of life to the honor and glory of your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your tender mercy did give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world and did institute in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father. We most humbly beseech you and grant that we receive in these your creatures of bread and wine according to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution in remembrance of his death and passion may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. And now I take the bread, which represents the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and I eat. I take the cup, which represents the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I drink. I rise that I might serve others. Now, won't you take the bread, which represents the broken body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and eat? Now take the cup, which represents the blood shed on Calvary's cross. For our sins, take ye and drink. Drink all of it in remembrance of our Lord. And you may go knowing that your covenant has been restored. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know. <laughs> I know it was the blood. But won't you join me in hallelujah. Reciting the Lord's prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day, one day. One day when I was lost, Jesus died upon that old rugged cross, and I know it was the blood for me. It was my Savior's blood. It was my Savior's blood. It was my Savior's blood. 
was my Savior's blood shed for me. One day, one day, one day when I was lost, he died upon the cross, and I know it was the blood for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And again, we thank you, hallelujah, for joining us here on today. We pray that something said, a song song has blessed you, that you might be able to bless somebody else. Hallelujah. And if you want to be a blessing in giving on today, we have several giving options. We have PayPal, Givelify. If you point your phone to that QR code at the bottom of the screen, it will take you directly to Give Lafay. You can mail in your donation any way you see fit to bless us. We thank God for you. And remember, all the money that we have is not ours. It's the Lord's. And all the money that the church has is not the church's. It's the Lord's. So when we give, let us do so cheerfully and watch God. Watch God open up the windows mm. of heaven and pour you out blessing after blessing after blessing. Yes, he will pour out blessings that you don't have room enough to receive. Amen. So we thank God this morning for his blessings. Amen. And then I want to take the time just to thank you all for Blessing little Twyla. We had a meet and greet on last week and she had the opportunity to meet CJ and BJ, Zion and King. And boy, she had a wonderful time with them. I want to thank the parents and the grandparents. And then I want to thank Dr. Myra for putting together some games where they were able to win some prizes. You know, the kids always like to win something. So I thank you for just welcoming little Twyla. I want to thank uh, Michelle Fuzzmore House. I want to thank her and the outreach ministry for the work that they did on last week when they came and we wrapped some gifts for the two families that we adopted, a total of nine children and two adults. And so I want to thank them. It was a good team. We worked together and had a good time. And we thank Michelle again for coordinating. Let me see who else was it there. It was Mother Cosette Ruff. We had Sabrina. We had uh, Levon myself and we had uh, Rose. I think that was it. He has about five or six of us. But we thank God for each and every one of you who came out so that we can be a blessing to the family. Amen. And then lastly, we had a church conference, y'all. For those of you who are missing, you should have been there. Yeah, we had a good time. We talked about our vision, our mission, and our values of the church and things we can do to come back into the church. So if you didn't hear about it, call somebody up so they can tell you about it. Amen. Hallelujah. Again, we thank you and we praise you. And we pray that something said today has blessed you. But you know, I want to leave you with these words. Peace. It does come from the world. The kind that comes from the world is nothing like the kind of peace yes. that God can give us. Amen. Hallelujah. And in order to have the peace that God can give us, that peace that surpasses all understanding, that peace that sustains us, all we have to do is ask him for it, follow him, and then trust him. Amen. And we can do those things. We will have that peace that God has promised us. Now, may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, may his sweet communion rest, rule, and abide now, henceforth, and forever. Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him. All creatures here below. Oh, praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Praise Father. 
God has spoken. God has spoken. Let the church say, Let Amen. Let the church say, Amen. God has spoken. Let the church say, Amen. 